there and there she is. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good. It's so nice to see your face, all this social isolation. It's lovely to see you. Right? I, I'm like dying to connect with people. <laughs> No, I'm really telling people like we can't let the physical isolation become in a mental and emotional and connection isolation. So we have to reach out through all these virtual methods and use them in whatever way we can. Are you so you're an ER doctor? Are you like in the thick of things? What is your role in this whole crisis? I uh, we are. So I you know I actually got called in last week to work two extra shifts because we'd had a doctor who was potentially exposed and was coughing, and so had to wait for that doctor to get tested. So I went and you know worked four shifts in just a few days together. Um, you, we are we're on the front lines. The ER is always kind of the canary in the coal mine. We see it for there before anything else. So it's been really interesting like Zibby this is why I trained and became the ER doctor but it's not something that I ever anticipated I mean how could anyone anticipate right. it it's like a movie it's like mm -hmm. exactly. um I want to talk about your book but just two more things on this whole crisis because I haven't actually talked to any doctors who are in it um is it as bad as it seems in the news and from what we hear like is it is it as bad as it seems so it's really, Zibi, that's a great question. It really differs nationwide. I mean, you see people at Washington State and New York, the ones that are kind of the early ones, it is really bad. I mean, hospitals are running out of ventilators. They don't have beds. They have doctors who are sick who can't get tested. It's ridiculous. And you hear about some athlete who got tested, and then I have friends who are doctors who can't get tested. Um, and then you have other places where I think it just hasn't hit yet. And somebody described it as kind of like being on living on the coast and being told that there's a tsunami or a hurricane coming in and you're just waiting for it. Okay. Well, your book, Mom Hacks, 100 plus science-based shortcuts to reclaim your body, raise awesome kids, and be unstoppable. Yeah. So we need some mom hacks, like desperately. Every mom who's at home with their kids needs a hack or two right about now. And I know a lot of what you offered were uh, things that are good for your health and exercise and you know, common sense, like you need to just do these things. But what are some really timely hack recommendations? What should we do? Like, what can yeah. we do as moms you or know, parents or dads, you know? We all need them. Yeah, and you're right. I've had many friends who are dads or who aren't moms at all who love the book. And the friends who are dads are like, can you just tear off the cover and make it dad hacks? Like, oh, stop it. Just go, wear it. go, go read it. And I've had other friends, men who say when they read mom hacks in the subway, they do pick up women. I'm like, it's the new puppy. Oh, I go. love it. Um, but I think... <laughs> I think two, two kind of categories come to mind. As you mentioned in Mom Hacks, we talk about sleep and nutrition and exercise and uh, mental health and stress. And I think two things, one is stress and then maybe the nutrition, we can talk about that. Um, it's, this is a stressful time. This is, I, this is not something that our generation has ever experienced, especially like this lockdown. And I had to go to the grocery store the other day and I went to one place and it was couldn't find what I needed. So I went to another one because I needed to get this stuff for the house. And so then I came home after spending this time out and I had detergent and I was carrying it out of my car in the garage and the door opened of my car and the detergent all dropped on the floor and shattered. No. And you know, any other time it's like detergent. I just started crying. I was so frustrated. I missed all this time to spend time with my kids. Um, so I was crying over spilled detergent, literally. Um, and at that moment, my husband was like, let's go play with the kids. And I was like, you know, I just got to go for a run. So because for me, and I was on my run because I went for my run, not for my hips or anything else. I went for my run because I felt that I was emotionally a tinderbox right then. And if all it took was some spilled detergent for me to just lose it, I didn't want to get worse. And so running for me is my outlet. I was on my run, you know, 10 minutes in, I no longer felt like yelling at every, at the world. So I think we all need to have their own out, our own outlet. And you have to know what this is because we're all right here in terms of like, if you, if lose it point is here, I feel like we're all kind of operating right here now, um, especially as parents. So I think find your outlet, whatever it is, and be ready when you get to that point to just disengage. I say run for five. And yeah, five, if you okay. can't get a five minute, that, that's another hack. Like if you say, I want to run for five minutes every day, start at five. And if you don't do it tomorrow, it's not because you're weak and you're not a person who exercises or you just have bad genes or something. It's because apparently to you, that was too high of a threshold. 
So we're like a scientist. We iterate just like in the tech world. So say, okay, tomorrow my goal will be for two and a half minutes. And you keep cutting that down until you get something that you can do. And I don't care if you're running for 30 seconds. BJ Fogg, who's a behavioral psychologist out of Stanford, wanted to do a push-up habit. So he said, every day after I brush my teeth, I'm gonna do one push-up. And that's where he started. And that is fine. That is cool. For me, this time is busier than ever, Zibby. I'm working extra shifts in the ER. I just did a, I'm doing CNN and a bunch of media interviews every day. I did a CNN one this morning at 5.30, which is kind of ungodly. I was like, is that not nice race right now at 5.30? Like, <laughs> let's be honest. Um, and then I'm also trying to do a lot on Instagram because I think there's so many, there's so much misinformation. There's so much confusion. There's so much hysteria and fear. And so I'm trying to use my Instagram profile to let people put up whatever questions they have. And then daily I can hop on there and either with a video or text, answer those questions. Well, thank you so much for coming on this little show. Thanks for coming from CNN to my Instagram. No, I'm show. so excited. <laughs> it's, it's really so good to see you. And it's so, so good to see you too, fun. really. All, all right, right. well, you. thank you. And thanks Same again for time. all the good work. Her book is Mom Hacks. Go get yes. it, Dr. Bye. Daria Gillespie. Okay. Ask me, all, anybody has any questions at Dr. Daria, I'm happy to answer everything that I can. Just DM me or put it in the comments or my stories or anything. I'm doing it every day. Amazing. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Bye. Bye.